All right, so we're in After Effects, and the first thing we'll do is we'll bring in the EXR and the JPEG. Remember, we're able to get that JPEG because in the output settings, in the preview is generating that JPEG so we can see what it's looking like. Because if we're in After Effects, we just see an EXR because we have a little bit of a workflow to be able to see all that. So let's go ahead and select all those bad boys, and I'm going to drag both of them. I'm going to make a single composition for now, and we don't see anything. There's a JPEG but this is the XR. Now before moving forward, I just want to let people know I do not claim to be an expert color transform colorist. These are just the things that work for me in my workflow because you know, sometimes you have things in a project file that might have a bunch of different elements or a bunch of different color spaces or footage or whatever it might be. And instead of having tons of different project files, I like having everything in one master project file. So with that said, I don't like to have to interpret too much stuff or have too many project settings different. I like doing it with effects in the composition. But with that said, these are the settings I'm using for myself. So I'm gonna control click this to get the project settings. I'm gonna do Adobe Color Managed. 8 bits per channel right now is incorrect. I'll show you why in a second. Tetrahedral, I set my working space to none and have my working gamma to rec 709. I'm gonna hit okay. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna bust out our handy dandy extractor and the first pass we're gonna get, and keep in mind, we won't use all of these. Some of these are being used by Turbo Tools, but we're gonna do our composite combined. And as you can tell, it looks like absolute trash. So this is where the color transform comes in. So with that selected, I like to use the open color IO plugin. And the first thing it's gonna ask you for is your configuration file. Now, I'm gonna go into custom here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my Blender properties. I'm gonna find the location of Blender, open file location, I'm going to click in there, copy and paste it. And inside of Blender 4.3, we're gonna go to data files, color management, and config OCIO. I'm going to open that. And so what we're going to see is our input space is a linear rec 709, which is basically almost what all the same filmic stuff looks like in my experience. And I could be wrong. When you do filmic from blender, you're able to use this open color IO and kind of get all the looks that you would normally do. And maybe ACE is a little bit different with this setup. So our input space will leave at linear rec 709. And remember we set ours to AGX base sRGB. We're gonna select use GPU. And now we're back to where we were and it looks just like it did in Blender with a little bit of those extra nice highlights and roll offs. Now, for the keen eye of you, if you're able to see this, we'll notice that in our highlights, our highlight roll off is extremely bad. And when you compare it to the JPEG, we are losing ton of data and anytime you see these whites go pure white like this and you don't get your nice roll off it's only because we're in 8 bits per channel we need to be in 32 bits per channel so I'm going to hold alt and click this there's 16 there's 32 and now these images are basically exactly the same but the difference is is now we have the latitude of EXR so for example if I bring in some levels and this is of course an extreme example, but it could affect your renders, is I'm gonna just crank up the brights. And what you'll see is we're starting to get all this weird noise and coloration and just a bunch of, we're, we're losing our information because it's getting too, getting too high, right? So right now we have the JPEG viewing it. Let's uncheck that. And look how much more latitude we have, even in this extreme example of color grading, which we'd never probably bump it this high. And hopefully you guys can see that, but look at all the, there's a JPEG, there's the EXR. Look at all that data and color we're maintaining because we can just push this like crazy. Same if, same if we're to lower the darks too much. Here's the EXR because it's clean. And you can see the issues we're getting with something like JPEG where we just don't have that same color latitude. The last step I like to do is you'll probably be using this workflow a lot so if I drag our presets over here, we can grab both of these, drag them over. I can call this the Blender EXR setup. I'll just overwrite the one that we have. And now, 
a faster way to do this when we start with our black screen. It's just we'll use Blender EXR setup and it's good to go and you would just change this depending on if you want AGX or Filmic or any other of these that you want to use. So now that we know that our EXR and AGX workflow is up and running, in the next video we'll take a depth pass and we'll get that set up and working from Blender into After Effects. It's a little bit different than Cinema 4D, but I'll show you how to get nice clean depth of field with no aliasing and you also don't have to render it out. So I'll see you in the next video.